Hello and welcome to Social Media for Humans, the podcast that empowers you to do social differently. Your host, Alexis Bushnell, and her guests discuss their experience of social media as business owners, users, and ultimately, humans, with insights and advice to help you find an effective and ethical strategy that works for you. Grab yourself a drink and join the conversation. Hello, hello. I am here with lovely Patrick. Would you like to introduce yourself? Certainly, I will do. So, um, yeah, I'm Patrick. I'm over in the UK, um, down near sunny Southend-on-Sea. And um, I've got a business um, that I run as a cost consultancy, which is Simplies, and I'm part of a mastermind group called Case Mastermind. And we run a monthly workshop and a monthly broadcast as well. Mm-hmm. So you've, got, you've kind of got your finger in, in quite a lot of pies. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah, I spin a few plates, but not too many now. I used to spin a lot more, um, but mm. you, we live and learn, I think. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Which actually very nicely brings us on to the topic that I kind of wanted to speak to you about, of like simplifying your life, because I tend to talk a lot about simplifying social media and people having fewer platforms, posting less often, that kind of thing and getting systems in place to make that easier for them. And part of what you do is helping people to simplify where they're spending their money and how all that's working. So yeah. obviously we both think that less is more. <laughs> Indeed we do. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you there. So yeah. So, well, okay, initially then, why, what were you doing beforehand that was so many plates and why did you decide to drop some of them? Um, I think, well, it's often called the entrepreneur's curse, isn't it? The next shiny diamond comes before you. It's almost like, um, you're probably not old enough to remember this, but the, the generation game on the BBC used to have a little conveyor belt. Oh, I do belt. remember the generation game, yeah. You had to remember everything on the conveyor belt, didn't you? It was always a cuddly toy and a toaster <laughs> or whatever. And I think that's what happens with us in our lives. Opportunities come our way. And I think the more we network, the more we connect with people, the more opportunities. And I think we have to put everything through a filter we have to look at our core values and to look at our goals. We always talk about goal setting, don't we? And um, got to have those common core goals. And when an opportunity arises, does this fold into my existing empire? Is it part of my core goals and my core mission? Is it taking me to the destination that my goals currently set for me? Or I suppose if we'd done an analogy and said, if I'm heading to India, India's not the best place to go at the moment, but if I'm heading to India and you said, oh, there's something great going on in America, then we've got to say, hang on a minute, where is our final destination? Um, yeah. So it's okay to zigzag on our journey as long as we finally end up at our destination. But if we start turning miles off, Mm. or bring yourself back on course so yeah that's the things that you have to thin off and it, it, mm. it's quite simple to do then because you look at where you're heading and you go right this is just totally taking me off on some new side shoot let's trim that back and yeah um, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I think that happens. It happens so often with like new social media platforms. And I've noticed this oh. a lot when Clubhouse launched and yes. suddenly every, well, everybody who's who's on iPhone was, <laughs> was on Clubhouse. <laughs> and it was it's, it's suddenly everybody is doing Clubhouse stuff every day. And they're ad, trying to add this to all their standard social media posting and stuff. And yeah. then they're going, God, I'm exhausted. I haven't got time. I'm so behind. I'm, and I'm thinking, yeah. well, you don't have to go in all guns blazing with everything. You know, you, you can wait. You can hop on every now and again when you find yourself with a, some spare time. You know, you don't have to leap in with both feet uh, immediately. 
I totally agree with you, and it, and it was a new platform, and so it is, you know, it's something exciting that's taking place. This could be another YouTube, or it could be another Instagram. We don't know, and um, I mean, very fortunately, I think for me, I I've got an Android phone, and I've never had. I'm going to get controversial on your podcast now. I've never had an Apple product because I never liked the fact that who was the guy at Apple? It was Steve Wozniak, wasn't it? Is that right? Wozniak? Uh, are we talking other than Steve Jobs? Yes. I think um, it was Wozniak and he went to Steve Jobs. He was like one of the chief engineers and he said, oh, we've got to get these things to interface with you know other general computers and he pretty much said well we don't want to we want everybody to be exclusive apple and we don't want to work with other products and and i've never liked that philosophy mm -hmm. and um, they may have changed now but um i've never adopted their products and the fact that clubhouse become exclusive like that um mm -hmm. it put me off to a degree and mm -hmm. i know they were beta testing and there are opportunities there because a lot of high profile social media figures, you know, Gary mm -hmm. V and the gang were there and you could probably end up going in a room and having a conversation with one of them. And there was a chance you could connect, etc. Mm -hmm. So good, good reasons. But that's all I ever heard was people said, yeah, I love Clubhouse and I've been on it for, you know, 15 hours. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely sort of, uh, it landed with a bang. Mm. And it, I would say I have heard very little talk about it the past week or so. Um, we are filming this at, towards the end of April for, for people listening. <laughs> yeah. It has surged. Um, but yeah, it, it was interesting. And on the sort of uh, <laughs> the Apple sort of Android debate, I, I am definitely Android. Um, and I actually, I always thought I was going to be like an Apple person. Um, and when I was younger, um, one of my friends lent me uh, their old iPhone to try before I invested in a very expensive iPhone. And I was so excited. I was like, yes, finally. Yes, this is amazing. Hated it. Hated it. Could not use it. Oh. Threw it in a week. <laughs> Never gone back. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm getting controversial. <laughs> the thing is, we can't oh, yeah. knock them because, I mean, you know, Apple, they innovated loads of new products and, and paved oh, yeah. the way with smartphones, everything else. I mean, you, know, you can't knock them for that. Yeah, and their, mm -hmm. their advertising is absolutely exceptional you know and their messaging etc yeah. but um yeah core values probably need addressing i would say that's what it is <laughs> yeah yeah take a look at those please apple yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. how, do, how do we bring this back now to simplify language <laughs> <laughs> you have not abandoned us <laughs> Uh, hopefully not hopefully not and uh, look i, I think it, we, we've gone we've gone off but we're coming back and i mean apple is a classic classic example of how you can simplify things because their products they all tie together and i think mm -hmm. becoming efficient in whatever possible ways you can and technology is just one of them isn't it that yeah you know, for example I've got a CRM, which is a customer relationship manager for anybody mm -hmm. that doesn't know what CRM means. And that's synced to the contacts on my phone, it's synced to my Outlook calendar, my emails. Mm -hmm. So everything is tied together. And when you're doing that, you're, you're saving yourself time. And I think mm -hmm. automation is part of that process there's things you can automate um but again there's things you can delegate and i i i'm always a strong believer in 
you've got to love what you do do what you love and the stuff you hate doing for goodness sake give it to somebody else yeah you know it, it there's so many freelancers i think the way that the business world is now lots of self-employed people lots of freelancers which means there's someone out there that would match any task you could ever throw out there if you don't like bookkeeping if you don't like accounts if you don't like social media if you don't like video work or you're not good at that then every man to their trade and yeah. we can spend so much time doing so much stuff that we just really don't need to be doing yeah really key, really key yeah i think i could give an example of that um mm -hmm. as i said earlier case mastermind is a mastermind group and we work as a collective community and we've got someone in there who's quite good at some social media so we've delegated to them mm -hmm. the social media aspects of it or some of it the video work that I was doing on the broadcast, it was all me. When we started it off, it was all me. I learned how to do video editing off, off, off the bat, off of nothing. Um, and I could cut a fairly decent video now, but it's mm. not really where I want to push my talents. And we've got mm. someone in the group now who's, who's really good. A video and we, we, he's he's just edited an episode and we're over the moon this means you know mm. three hours or four hours of my month i've just got back because somebody yeah. else who who probably could do it in 45 minutes to an hour compared to my four hours as well so mm. it's it's about knowing where to push things and how to simplify out your life to free it up to do the things you want to do yeah 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 and i think one of the things that tends to come up certainly came up for me and i know it's come up for sort of other freelancers and that is is always how do i know when to outsource how do i know when to start automating things and implementing systems and it i tend to feel like the answer now that I have started to outsource and implement systems is before you start asking that question. <laughs> <laughs> I think there tends to be this thing of once you start asking that question, it's because you are short on time and you don't really have the time to set up a load of automations, but you're not sure that you have the, the financial capacity to start employing or outsourcing a lot. And so you feel like you're totally stuck. Uh, so I, I am definitely yeah. sort of team source now. Um, and I do think if you can do it sooner as well, so that you don't get into that situation where you are feeling stuck and like, I really don't have the time to do all these things, but I also can't outsource it because I can't, I can't train someone how to do it. I can't, explain, you know, like whatever the situation is. So how did you decide when to start outsourcing? So um, I think it evolved over time. You, When you're you know, running around, you've got so many things to do and you can't do the things, one that you want to do and two mm -hmm. that you need to do as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I think you're right in what you said that the financial side of it is is a big key issue for a lot of people you know we can't all go out and take on a full-time bookkeeper at x amount of pounds um we've got places like fiverr on the internet mm -hmm. which is spelt f-i-v-e-double-r i believe fiverr.com mm -hmm. and there's various other websites such as that that where you can delegate and and that can be quite minimal rates and mm -hmm. 
be careful where you delegate, you know, interview people. It's like interviewing people for a job. That may take mm -hmm. a bit of time, but if it's somebody that you can then build an element of trust with, that's the key part. Um, we've got lots of VPAs around now, which are virtual personal assistants. Mm -hmm. And though they may charge, you know, anywhere between 20 to 30 pound an hour, generally in the UK, um, and we think that's, you know, it's a lot of money. They can do a lot in that hour. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. What we can do in an hour, you know, they can probably do in 20 minutes sometimes. Um, so it's knowing people's skill sets, using mm -hmm. those skill sets. There's VPA agencies now that can put the right people in front of you for certain tasks. And again, overseas VPAs as well. These are people that you might be paying them $5 an hour, um, but to them, that's huge money. So mm -hmm. you, you are benefiting these people because that's good money where they're based and you're giving them work. So I think you've got to find the right ethical and moral principles around mm -hmm. that. But um, there, there is a way to do it. And if you pay people fairly, then um, there's lots of options open to you. And as I, mm -hmm. as I mentioned to you earlier, I've only just recently finished Tim Ferriss's four hour work week. Mm -hmm. I mean, that book is absolutely filled with, and it's an audio book, but it was filled with web references to different other companies where you can delegate and, and use services. I mean, it's a bit strange to listen to an audio book when someone's reading out web addresses, <laughs> which probably could have been a bit more thought out for an audio book. Um, but, um, you know, a real eye-opener. Learn mm. a lot there, but I think a personal assistant is your starting place mm. because very often I'll say to my personal assistants that I have, um, okay, I need to delegate this. Can you find me someone? And I'll mm. give them the task of finding mm. someone to do that. So what you're doing is you're leveraging your time. Mm -hmm. And as long as you give clear, concise instructions, which I've learned from experience, you've got to be a bit clearer sometimes <laughs> than what I can be. Um, as long as you make that clear what you want. And I think you've got to also drop your bar of perfectionism mm -hmm. and allow yeah. somebody else their own level of creativity. Um, I, I know I read a book on uh, General Eisenhower from World War II. Uh, mm. And it was, you know, he, he was going through the wars. And there was another general called General Patton, which is also a very famous general. And Patton got a lot more done than all the others put together. And there was a stark difference between the two. Eisenhower delegated tasks and instructed someone completely and fully exactly how he wanted that task done. General Patton delegated a task and he allowed then the creativity to go away and achieve that task in the best way that they saw fit. Mm -hmm. And not only did he save himself too much time over explaining, he did have an element of risk that it could be done not quite to how he wanted. But I believe his expression was something on the terms of he let people surprise him of their level of ingenuitivity or that they could come up with a newer, better way of doing it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, I think it is, it's, so, it's so helpful to to have to, especially if you know that somebody has their expertise in the area that you are outsourcing to trust them and their expertise and their experience and say like look this is the outcome that i want 
how yeah. you get there, but you, you you do you, figure it out, that's fine. As long as this is what, what I get at the end of it, like with your video, yeah. as long as there is a video this long that, you know, looks like this at the end of it, I don't care like how you do it or what you use or <laughs> just, just, you know, yeah. off you go. Enjoy yourself. That's it. That's it. And it's that, that I think that actually takes something. That's something that, I mean, I, there's a bit of a perfectionism in me that I've had to control mm -hmm. over the years and just beat it out of myself because, you know, um, you can put a shelf up and take 10 hours to do it, but actually you could probably do one just as well in half an hour without mm -hmm. being so precise. And we, we can find this in business. We can over perfect things. It makes us procrastinate take too long or never actually do anything or ever actually make a decision so to it's a, like you said you're exactly right it's an element of trust i'm going to trust you to go away and do something in the example of that videographer he come back with something totally different that i would have never done but I, I, I gave him creative license. And look, at the end of the day, I could have said, I don't like it. Can we do it again? But I said, mm. that's great. Because that's not what I would have ever thought of. And when that comes out, we might get some strange feedback from it. We might get some really positive feedback. But we don't know. It's something new and different. And I think we've got to mm. dare, dare to be different, dare to change. We, us human beings hate change, but we should embrace it because change has only brought um, evolvement for the human race. So we must always be willing to change because someone may just well come up with something that makes our lives 100% better. Mm. You've got to be open yeah. to that. Yeah. yeah, it's true. And you, you do, like you say, you have to be open to, to trying new things and i think especially in business you've got to be able to, to to even when it comes to automating stuff trying new software it's always a risk that you're not going to get on with that software and you do have to have that ability to be like well i'm going to try it and if i hate it and it doesn't work i'll try something else uh, but yeah. you, you do have to sort of keep taking those risks so yeah it's something that i have sort of had to learn as well because i do have a lot of that perfectionism in me as well um, and to, to learn to sort of take those risks and be like, well, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Well, we'll, we'll learn something from it. Um, <laughs> it is so, so important in, in business, especially. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I've heard it said a number of times that I've never made a bad decision, but it's actually true. We've never made a bad decision because... When we made that decision, we made it based on what we knew at the time. And we'll make a decision and we'll do something. And we might find out later that we could have made a better decision than the yeah. one we made. Um, but without first making that decision, that's where we can lose out. And I think a big learn for me was the phrase, ready fire then aim <laughs> we often ready and then we aim we'll aim a bit more we'll aim a bit more and then fire but actually you know let, let's take the analogy of firing a gun if you just fire at the target and you see your an inch off that way well then just adjust your shot next time an inch in the other direction mm -hmm. And you should hit the bullseye. So the guy that spent half an hour aiming it up, the other guy who's fired two or three shots, he's hit the bullseye already. So, yeah. you know, we've got to be willing to make a few little mistakes because actually when we do, people are very forgiving. I've, I've mm -hmm. made loads of mistakes. I've made loads of mistakes on social media and done controversial things. People haven't held that against me till the end of time. And... You've just got to be willing to go be transparent and say, well, hey, this is me. Yeah, we're getting it. We're mixing it and matching it and going along the way. 
but we advance much quicker, much mm. quicker. Can I can I give you a story that's a really good analogy? Oh, I love I love a story. Yes, go. Okay, so for a time, um, my wife, my current wife, and I, we we lived in a what's called a fifth wheel trailer. So it's like a caravan on steroids. If you look it up online, it's like a lorry back that hitches onto the back of a, a pickup truck with a hitch point on. They're huge and massive. The sides come out absolute. They're luxury. We loved it. And we went, uh, we got it taken away. Or, well, we took it somewhere. And they were doing some work on it. We actually got a tumble dryer and a washing machine fitted in this thing. And that was a challenge. They didn't think we could do it. We did. And we'd done all this work on there. And we were talking to the people about these things. We learned a lot about fifth wheel trailers when we were looking for one. And we come across someone because I've got a manufacturing background and manufacturing in the UK is if we've got a new idea to change something, well, that has to be sent to the planning department. Then that has to be signed off by an engineer. Then it has to go to the drawing office to then approve that drawing and that design. Then we're going to have to have a committee meeting about it. Blah, blah, blah. Around the circles, six months later, your idea might be embraced. And this guy worked in a UK based company and he said it was a nightmare to get anything changed. And he went to work in one that was over in the States and they were in this thing and they said, well, how about we change this bit here and we move this here? And the guys were going, oh yeah, that's great. And they're writing it down, you know, fag packet drawing as we used to call it, you know, just scratching it out in a notepad. And he said, okay, I'll be back in a minute. He said, where are you going? He said, well, I'm gonna get it done. I'm gonna get someone to make it up. He says, well, just like that. And he said, yeah, that's how we work over here. And they literally, went away and within well, several hours they were patching something up in this thing and going yeah yeah that's great we like that oh well what we do we change this bit we do that bit and he said within a day or two we totally redesigned this thing and in the uk it would have took six months what works better and what country was always renowned for being the most industrious in the world it was the states mm -hmm. Stop filling things up with red tape and allow that freedom of creativity and, and just be daring and, and say, this is a change, let's make it now and then see what happens. Because you can always undo these things anyway. Stitches in clothing can always be unpicked, <laughs> isn't it? You yeah. Know? And you, you do, you learn so much more by doing things, you know, you really do. Yeah. You, even yeah. if, I mean, I would say I'm, I'm like, I'm a book learner. I tend, I learn quite well from like watching a video, reading a book, you know, listening to a talk, something like that. But I still learn a lot more just by implementing it because that's yeah. when you then start to understand how it works and also what works for you. And because you can listen to somebody talk about like, this is how you can do, you can implement this social media strategy. You can use this tool, but until you actually try it yourself and you're, you're using it and you don't yeah. realize which bits are working for you, which bits aren't working for you, why those things aren't working. And you can't then adjust for yourself and for you know what's going on with your business or your life or whatever so you do have to try stuff and just be like right okay we'll, we'll figure it out as we go along because you do you really do learn so much more just by doing stuff yes absolutely you you really do and you know i, th I think when you've got to delegate things off or or, or whatever you do with them you've got to have and understanding of the process. But I will never say you need to fully understand it all, as long as you've got the basic knowledge. So you can at least check what somebody else is doing or what the system that you've automated is doing. 
um, and a way to check on that as well. Um, I think that's key with automation that whatever that process is you've got set up, you need a way to be able to check in on that, you know, especially if you've automated emails, make sure that you send a test one to you and things like this, because there's nothing worse than it comes out with hello, bracket, bracket name, rather than <laughs> your name. It's like, oh, okay, okay, you just sent me an automated email. It just makes the whole thing, you know, tears it all down, doesn't it? So mm. you just got to make sure the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed in the mm. right places, definitely. But, mm. you know, I that book, The 4-Hour Working Week, um, it's just just took me to another level to see where life can be so changed. Uh, I think one of the keys also is to schedule your day. Um, mm -hmm. I live by my schedule and that doesn't mean that my schedule controls me because I control the schedule. Mm -hmm. So you have to make it have an element of flexibility yet within that you've got to set tasks and time for tasks that they're going to take so you do them within that time because it is right. so easy to overdo a task and you've got to be you've got to be reasonable with yourself and you've got to allow yourself downtime between tasks as well. But that improves efficiency. I take so many more breaks now because I found the more breaks I take, the more refreshed I am when I come back. You know, yeah. I had a break before we recorded this podcast. I wasn't going to go from one task and then come into this. I wanted to come into this fresh with a clear mind and it's so much easier to do things then and referencing another book there's a book called the one thing and not being a multitasker multitaskers oh, i say a great multitasker can burn a hole in your shirt and burn the dinner at the same time <laughs> And this is what we do. We're trying to do loads of things all at once and everything is half done. Mm. Actually, if you said, this is what I'm doing, I'm certainly not recording this podcast with you now while trying to type an email or trying to look on Google at something. You know, it. I mean, it would be obvious anyway. And I think it becomes obvious in, in our results. Um, mm. It's focused on one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. um, your day is much more efficient. We try to put too much into our day. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. I I set three objectives for a day. If I mm -hmm. achieve those three, the day is done. I normally achieve more than that, but they're those three core tasks, mm -hmm. and they're in line with my goals and objectives. What I'm looking to achieve. Therefore, the day is simplified. The pressure that you put yourself under mm. is so reduced. Yeah. Well, I've done that, I've done that. Oh, I haven't done that. But that doesn't matter because that wasn't in the three things that you mm. put to yourself. And if you don't get one of those done, okay. I haven't done that. That, that is now a priority for tomorrow. I've got mm. to force that into tomorrow to work to get that done that's a way you can organize your life um in a very simplified manner and we we can we can all have a free calendar now google calendar is free if you don't want to get an outlook one like i've got google is free and you can and i've i've used that in the past google mm -hmm. calendar all these things you can do at zero cost very often mm -hmm. because there's platforms out there now that enable you to do that. 
and just yeah. do a little bit of homework. You know, um, I'll give you another example. Video editing. Adobe do a really great video editing bit of software. Costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. the, the video editing software that I use is a free version called Shotcut. I've used it for, I don't know, a year, 18 months. It's not cost me a penny. I had to learn to use it. It was all off of YouTube clips and Google. And that's that's free. So mm. it's you don't delegation or ways of doing things doesn't have to cost you the earth. It's mm -hmm. a really strong point to emphasize. Yeah, yeah. And now it's true. And I do think that there is a lot of if you I tend to find if you ask for sort of um, solutions in like business groups, a lot of people will send you their affiliate links to paid software and things. And actually, there is a lot to be said for the free software out there. And especially early on, um, you know, in your business, use like use the free stuff. I used free yeah. stuff for, forever. <laughs> <laughs> I've only, I mean, I've been using Dubsado as a CRM now for six months or so, I think. What's it called? Um, Dubsado. Dubsado. I've got the links in the show notes, obviously. Um, yeah, it's it's. I I like it as a CRM. Um, it's okay. not all seasonal dancing, but it does everything I need it to do, and it is it is a paid version. Um, but before that, I was manually doing stuff, basically. <laughs> um, and yeah. like for planning and stuff, I tend to use Notion now. I do use Google Calendar um, and I've, I've got Google Workspace because I use it for a lot of storage and stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah, planning wise, I use Notion, which is is free. Um, and I have a sort of daily page in Notion, basically, which has uh, like essential to do tasks things that I have to do today, and then bonus tasks, which are like, if you've finished all <laughs> these things and you've got some energy left, maybe have a go at these. <laughs> <laughs> so I think just like, don't be afraid to make the most of the free software out there. Um, and there's free yeah. software for so many things. Like there's free scheduling tools for social media, sending emails, CRM systems, calendars, note taking, all of it. You know, you can get a free free version, even if it's only a trial version, to just get you going, um, yeah. and to, to simplify things a little bit for you, um, before you're, you know, while you get ready to sort of level up, if you like. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think these companies that embrace that. Um, that's why they're so successful. Google is so successful because it offers you so much free stuff. You come in there and then when you want to upgrade, there will be a tendency to stick with Google on certain mm -hmm. aspects because, you know, you've got used to how that works. So when you want to step up, well, this works exactly the same, but as these extra features, you stay with that. And that's, I think that's a genius business model that mm -hmm. those things are offered out there for free. And it's like anything, as your business evolves, you know, you might use something like Agora Pulse to manage your social media. And then eventually someone's going to come to someone like you, Alexis, and say, right, you know, I was doing all this, but actually even writing those posts is taking me so many hours a week. I wouldn't you to write things for me and do things for me that's how we evolve and grow as a business we gradually outsource and move ourselves to a place where we do the things that we like doing i think there's nothing better than in a day you go you know there's a book i think called eat that frog i've never read it which is She's a bit corny, but um, uh, that book is about doing the most 
horrible task that you don't want to do and doing that first and getting it out of the way. And I think if you do that and you can reward yourself if you've got that all done and you've got an hour free at the end of the day, if you like doing some random social media post or creating some sort of little video for your business, reward yourself with doing that because you look forward to it. Oh yeah, I can do this and get creative and, and, and I think you, we should enjoy the journey. It should be an adventure. It mm. shouldn't be a chore. We should be able to leap out of bed in the morning and go, yippee, I can't wait to get started. If we're throwing the covers back reluctantly, we're trying to throw the alarm clock in a bucket of water because we don't want to face the day. Um, you know, I, I think it's horrible. I've, never, I've not used an alarm clock for years. I naturally mm -hmm. wake up early hours of the morning and I'm ready to get up and go, you know, and um, I wouldn't change that for anything in the world. Mm. I've done it. I've done a job where I've gone. Oh no! Oh, oh no! I've got a face today. Never again. Never mm. again. It's just not worth it. Life's too short. Yeah, yeah. And I think early on, um, because I mean, like you were saying, when you first start your business, you do end up doing everything because you, you have <laughs> to initially. And I think you you can get into that state of oh, I've got to do, like, accounts for me. I hate numbers are not my thing. Um, <laughs> I really hate accounts. So that is the thing. I, I like, I'm, I hate doing it. I hate it. And you can get into that, that mindset where you procrastinate it because you hate it so much. Yes. And then you get yourself into a worse situation. And I do think that, A, like you say, blocking out some time to do it and saying, right, I, I have set this time aside. I am only going to do accounts or whatever it is that you hate during this time. Yeah. And then once, once I finish that time, I can forget about it is really helpful. Um, and also looking at what options there are, prefer preferably for free, to help you with whatever it is that you hate doing. Because even early on, I think, you do have to do those things that make you think, oh, I really don't want to do this. But trying to make it a bit easier for you so that you're not procrastinating it and making it even more difficult to do those things and in in inevitably taking up a lot more of your time because you are putting it off and also probably yeah. putting off doing other stuff because you feel like you should be doing the stuff that you hate. <laughs> Can you tell I'm speaking from experience? Um, <laughs> it is so it is so important. It makes such a difference to find tools and things that help you to make that easier, whether that's sort of a free um, bookkeeping software or, you know, finding a, a, a trainee bookkeeper maybe who will do it at a lower cost or, you know, whatever sort of system it is, or even downloading like a free um, bookkeeping template from the internet and putting your stuff into there to give you some starting point. Finding the things that like you hate doing and figuring out why you hate them and then being like, right, how can I make this a little bit easier for myself? Yes. And at a lower cost is so like it makes such a huge difference, and it means that you can start focusing more and enjoying the rest of your work time as well. Definitely, definitely, and I think you have to analyze it from what your hourly rate is. You know, I do a job, you do a job within your business that earns revenue to the business and i don't know if you work 10 hours and that brings in 500 pound quite simply that's 50 pound an hour so your charge out rate is 50 pound an hour so if you're there sitting there doing the books and you're spending 10 hours doing that and you've got to say okay well if i'm spending 10 hours doing that that's actually costing me 500 pounds because if i was doing other work mm -hmm. I would generate that level of income so that's costing me 500 pound not directly you're not paying 500 pound but you're in essence losing that mm -hmm. so 
if someone says okay well i can do that task and i can do that for a hundred pound well that's a bargain mm -hmm. because that frees up your time do you have to look at it from that aspect of your charge out rate if i'm going to go and wash my car and that takes me an hour and my my rate is 50 pound let's say well that's just cost me 50 pound so if i if someone says well i'll do that for you for even 20 pound you might go 20 pound wash my car actually that's that's more cost effective it takes me an hour to cut my grass that's 50 pound someone might come and cut that for a tenner so you, you see what i'm saying I, i've had these conversations with my wife before when we looked after her mum while she was alive and she had lots to do she said oh i've got all this ironing i said okay and we just i just found someone and got them to do all our ironing and it cost mm -hmm. us i don't know it's about 20 20 25 pound but it was probably three or four hours of ironing so yeah when you look at it like that and you might say why are we talking about ironing but actually it's all those things that mm -hmm. uh, if we're doing them, actually, we need to really assess, should we be doing them or should we be simplifying our life to a place where we're only doing the things we want to do and need to do? Mm -hmm. And then you've got loads more free time and that's happy days then. <laughs> it, is. it is. That is the that is the aim of the game. I think that's a, that a wonderful point for me to ask. So if people want to simplify, especially their business life, um, tell, tell them where they can find you and, and how you can help them. Okay, well, websites are full of contact details. So my website for Simplies is simplies.co.uk. So Simplies is spelled S-I-M-P-L-I-E-S dot uh, uk and um case mastermind is what it is case mastermind.co.uk um you can contact me through either of those um sites more than happy to engage with people and with a name like patrick twitchett you can find me on linkedin quite easily to be fair <laughs> <laughs> But I will put all the links in the show notes so people don't even have to search for you. They can just click it and, and visit you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think, you know, there's an old saying, isn't there? You, you either work to live or you live to work. And I've always mm -hmm. said, you just want to work um, to live. It's life. And the, the, the great things in life, the friends, the family and the things that you enjoy, um, you know, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. <laughs> As they say. I, and I do think a lot more people have sort of come to that realisation over the past year or so as well. Yes. Yeah, I think that downtime um, being being grounded by the government like naughty children. <laughs> um quite rightfully so you know the lockdown was an essential thing and um yeah i think everybody's lives have changed but i think they've changed for the better they spent more time with the family and said you know what i've sat down with the kids and we played a board game and i haven't done that in a long time and yeah mm. these are the things that you will never get that time back ever mm. ever yeah yeah. Definitely. Well, thank you very much for being here. I think we've covered a lot of ground. <laughs> I think we have. A big thank you to Louise, who is supporting the show on Patreon. You can donate any amount you like over on Patreon uh, each month. That goes towards paying for captions and the transcript. That makes the show accessible. Uh, there is also a Pride offer this month on the Social Media for Humans Club, both the Business Club and the Non-Business Owners Club. Uh, if you use the code PRIDE21 when you sign up, you will get 50% off your first month in either club. So we would absolutely love to see you in there. If you want more regular reminders to find your own way to use social media, Follow Alexis on your social platform of choice. All the links will be in the show notes. 
Until next time, be a human.